what is going on everybody welcome back to another video here inside the nerdy realm within the multiverse we've got the third episode of the miss marvel series this week so today we're going to go back through it and break it down then give our thoughts on the episode itself as usual since we are going back through the episode and breaking it down as well as giving our thoughts on it there will of course be spoilers in this video so if you don't want to hear anything spoilery this is your spoiler warning now make sure to come back when you have seen the episode yourself. So now that that is out of the way, let's begin going back through this episode and breaking it down and point out some possible details that could be hinting at where the storyline will end up going, so then we can give our thoughts on the episode after. Last episode left off with Kamala getting in the car with Kamran after being chased by the DODC drones, only for Kamran's mother to pop up in the back seat of the car very ominously. Which brings us to the beginning of this episode as we see a sort of backstory or a little history behind Kamran's mother, Najma, and the group that she is a part of that we meet again later in this episode. We start off the episode by going back to the year of 1942 in British-occupied India, which is just a few years before the unfortunate and sad time in history known as the Partition, which Kamala's father Yusuf told stories of this traumatic part of history and how their family was affected by it in the last episode. We arrive in a sort of cave or a possible ancient tomb which has carvings along the walls and artifacts lying around in the rubble. We see Najma, Kamran's mother, digging through the rubble along with the group she is a part of which includes the likes of Salem, Faria, as well as Kamala's great-grandmother, Aisha. After digging up some of the rubble, Najma finds the bangle but it is attached to a blue arm. Faria seems concerned about this but Najma dismisses it as she says, you heard what that man from the temple said. Salem asks where the other one is, but Faria tells him that the British have looted this place ten times over, so it is probably gone. As the structure begins falling apart as a fire breaks out, when the camera is in the aerial view of this group, we can see that the floor has the carvings of the Ten Rings organization. Now, to touch on all of the stuff that I just mentioned, and that just happened, the group finding the bangle on a blue arm makes this all very likely to be Cree related, and the bangle could even be the ancient Kree technology. When we hear Najma mention the man in the temple and then we see the Ten Rings organization symbol on the floor, this gives me the idea that the man in the temple she mentions is Wen Wu, Sheng Chi's father also known as the Mandarin, the real Mandarin, and the one who runs the Ten Rings organization and possessed the Ten Rings themselves at this point in time during this sequence, giving us an idea that the Ten Rings could possibly be some somewhat connected to the Bangles and maybe even the Kree. As in the post credit scene for the Shang-Chi movie, when Wong is examining the rings, he mentions that it is sending out a beacon to something. The beacon possibly being sent out to the Kree. As we know, Secret Invasion is right around the corner and we still have much to learn about the Kree Skrull War that has been going on. And Miss Marvel will be a part of the Marvels, being the sequel to Captain Marvel, and that Secret Invasion will most likely be heavily connected to that movie, so all of this has a pretty good chance of all being connected to one another. The Kree are also the ones that created the Terrigen Mist in the comics, which is ultimately what created the Inhumans and was what gave Kamala her powers in the comics as well. When Wu could have found the Ten Rings in this very cave or tomb that Najma is searching and where they found the bangle. They even mention that Wen Wu most likely found the rings in a crater or he stole them from a tomb in the Shang-Chi movie. The energy and colors that illuminate from both of the bangle and the Ten Rings also look nearly identical when compared to one another, giving us even more of an idea that these things could be very much connected in one way or another. Faria mentions that that the second bangle is gone and the fact that the British looted this tomb ten times over could mean that it is in the possession of someone else or another group, keeping us at a mystery as to where it could be. We learn more about the group that Najma is a part of and that they are from another dimension and are over 100 years old. Kamran himself though is actually 17. Najma says that they came from the Nor dimension which is also known as the Light dimension. Najma continues to speak to Kamala about 
about the bangle and how the bangle was able to unlock Kamala's nor or light and then mentions how maybe one day something else will do the same for Kamran, sort of hinting to us that he too may actually receive his powers from the comics or something similar to them. Najma tells Kamala that in the nor realm, her and her group are referred to as clandestines, but on earth and in the realm that they are trapped in, they have been called many things, such as Ajnabi, Majnun, the Unseen, as well as Jin. The term Jin has been mentioned in the background of the series a few times, like in episode 1 when Yusuf says that something is possessed by the evil Jin, and the term is a part of something in pre-Islamic mythology relating to spirits. Yusuf also translates Bruno's studies of the Jin later in this episode, where he translates and tells Bruno that the Jin were often known as demons or spirits in pre-Islamic mythology, and that they were exiled from their own world and now damned and stuck and having to live out the rest of their days and hours, saying that they move in shadows as they search for the key to unlock the ancient gates back to their real home. But to unlock this, they require a primordial power. Najma also said that they have been called Ajnabi and Majnun. Ajnabi refers to something that is strange, and the term Majnun refers to someone who is crazy. While Bruno begins his research on the term Jin and the Nor dimension, he mentions that he remembers a paper relating to the topic, which was written by Dr. Eric Selvig, who is the astrophysicist from the first Thor film and who was also in the first Avengers film, and was one of the many that got mind controlled by Loki and the Scepter. Agent Deaver and other agents from the Department of Damage Control show up to the mosque that Kamala and her family attend, and they disrespectfully storm right into the building and show no respect as they leave their shoes on and Deaver just stomps through the mosque. Luckily though, she is stopped and confronted by Nakia as they are legally not allowed to search this building or any property without a search warrant of course, so they are forced to leave as they have no reason to be there other than their suspicions. Kamala sits on the front steps of her house while the party goes on inside, waiting to open the box that Bruno left for her, where her sheik walks out and they have a great moment of dialogue and he gives her some advice, telling her that being good is not something that someone is, but it is something that someone does. Basically telling her and giving her advice, but also advice for her new superhero life. When he leaves, Kamala decides to open the box that Bruno left for her, and when she opens it, we see that Bruno left her her very own superhero mask, similar and practically identical to hers in the comics. When Bruno and Kamala talk about helping Najma and her group, he tells her that it is extremely dangerous and could cause horrible things to happen, and that she shouldn't be so much like Carol Danvers, also known as Captain Marvel, who she looks up to, as she would be reckless and Kamala should not. This is somewhat similar to what goes on in the comics, as we know Kamala looks up to Carol as well, but when she becomes a superhero herself, she wishes to separate from that part of herself and become a unique hero and be her own person, rather than basing things off of someone that she would look up to. We get so many different scenes regarding faith and culture in this episode, whether it was the extremely fun wedding of Amir's where they get some pretty fun dance scenes as the family celebrates Amir getting married, or whether it was Kamala's heart-to-heart -heart moment with her mother, or Amir and Yusuf's heart-to-heart. -heart. It was all really beautiful and super fun to see. Kamran shows up to the wedding unexpectedly and grabs her away from Bruno and warns her of what is about to happen, as his mother and her group are heading there now to take Kamala in and force her to open the gateway back to their realm, and that his mother will stop at nothing to get what she wants. In response to this, Kamala pulls the fire alarm down in an attempt to get everyone else out of there and to safety, as Najma has just arrived and is looking for Kamala and the bangle. We can see that Najma and the other clandestines do have some sort of power set. It's really unknown how they have these or what they really are, but we do see that they can sort of form or summon different types of weapons, such as a spear and other things, that seem to show up out of nowhere, as it is most likely a part of their power sets. During these little action scenes, we do get to see Kamala using her powers some more, where we do get some cool nods to comics as Kamala uses her powers to create 
create a giant fist to defend Bruno for one of the clandestines. Kamala and Bruno get surrounded and Najma grabs a hold of Kamala and the bangle where the same type of projection or portal from last episode opens up where we see a train. The train that Yusuf talked about while telling stories of the partition. The same train that is connected to Kamala's great grandmother, Aisha. After this, the DODC end up coming in and arresting Najma, Kamran, and the other clandestines as Kamala and Bruno are able to sneak out. Nakia catches Kamala using her powers as Bruno and her leave the building and we can see that Nakia is upset by this. Kamala returns home to her worried family and they ask her if she was the one that pulled the fire alarm but she completely denies it and tells them that she can't say what's going on and she goes up to her room to be alone after the horrific night that just happened that she most likely blames herself for. The episode ends when Kamala gets a call from her grandmother telling Kamala that she and her mother need to come to Karachi as she saw the train that Kamala saw when Najma held onto the bangle and we can assume we will be going to Karachi in the next episode to continue Kamala's journey and uncover more of the mystery and backstory behind the bangle and its power. Well, that about does it for breaking down the third episode of the Miss Marvel series. As for what we thought of it, well, it was just as fun as the previous two episodes and getting more of the mystery behind the bangle uncovered was interesting. Some things in this episode did feel a little choppy at times and it did feel like the slowest episode for me out of the three that we have gotten but personally I did still enjoy it a lot and all of the possible little connections and details in this episode were super cool. Something about the pacing in this episode just felt a little slow but that's really not that big of an issue because there was a lot of story told in this episode regardless. With all of the mystery behind what's going on we still have so many questions that we are waiting to be answered and we can't really see where this series and the story behind it will go which makes it even more interesting and fun and keeps us even more hooked to the series. I'm still excited to see where this series goes and what we will end up discovering about all of the stuff that is going on in Kamala's life now and I can't wait for the next episode but make sure to let us know what you thought of this episode down in the comments below and where you think this all may be going. With all of that being said though that's it for this week's episode of Miss Marvel but remember if you are feeling extra nerdy today make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on to help support the channel and to get more nerdy content from us. And if you wish to support us even further, feel free to check us out on other social platforms and everything else, all linked in the description below. And as I always say, thank you all for watching. We will see you all the next time that we go through and explore the nerdy multiverse.